Good morning. Um, so uh, before I start, uh, if I could just take a quick poll, show of hands. Um, who's involved in development of big data systems? Yeah, good. All right, those of you that raised your hands, you're in the right place. Uh, the rest of you, um, I hope you'll find this interesting. Um, I read this morning there were, or there will be, two and a half exabytes of data generated today. All right, so big data systems are becoming pervasive. Uh, we see them in all parts of the enterprise, from uh, back-end business systems up through uh, healthcare, logistics, situational awareness, and all the way out to the tactical edge, as uh, shown in this quote here. So if you're working on anything with data to decisions, eventually you'll be working on big data. Uh, now these big data systems are built using NoSQL technology and horizontal scaling. Horizontal scaling, we're going to take our processing and storage and spread it across a set of servers uh, connected by network connections, so now we've got to worry about those. And we're talking about tens to thousands of servers. Right? Netflix, as an example, runs on a 2,000 plus server cluster, their database. So uh, big scale um, and NoSQL technology. Uh, so NoSQL technology is built explicitly to run on these horizontally scaled systems to deal with this trade-off that's implicit in distributed systems. We need to start trading off architecture qualities. Uh, the most famous of these, the, the CAP trade-off, we've got a trade-off between consistency of the replicated data and availability when a network partition occurs. So NoSQL systems built to deal with that, they achieve high performance the way they do that, one of the ways is through tuning that trade-off between consistency and availability. So for every table or collection in your database, the developer can turn that dial to get the right trade-off between consistency and availability for the application that they're building. The other thing that NoSQL databases do for us is they've got very lightweight data models. This is another piece of the performance picture there. Uh, these data models range from very simple key value lookups to graph structures, to um, document stores with internal structure of the documents and full text indexing, all the way up to column-oriented stores that start to look a little bit like the, the SQL tables that we're familiar with. Um, now, as we make these trade-offs between qualities and different data models, um, we need to select the database technology very early in the development cycle. And this is because that trade-off uh, shows up as a pervasive impact in all of the applications that are going to get built to use that database. So we need to first pick the database before we can start application development. Uh, and uh, so it needs to get done early. Uh, we often have incomplete requirements. And that's been the focus of our research this year, is how can we make that technology selection in an evidence-based, uh, principled, systematic way that's repeatable. Uh, so we've got a method and a knowledge base that supports that. And you may be looking at this saying, this is just COTS technology selection. We know how to do COTS selection. Um, and that's true in one sense, but the big data context presents some unique challenges to us. Uh, the size of the solution space is large. There are hundreds of options to choose from. And the differences between them are enormous. Um, the difference between a very simple key value store and the capabilities you get from a graph-oriented database are um, very, very different. Uh, so that's one difference. Um, and the second is the scale. Um, you know, when you get to prototyping, if you're going to talk about terabytes of data and tens or hundreds of servers just in your prototype, uh, that's a non-trivial problem. So uh, yes, it's cot selection, but there are some, some key differences. So to address that, uh, we worked on uh, a project with a, a large DOD organization um, where we went through this the first time. And coming out of that, we said we need to, uh, to make this systematic and repeatable. And so the research we did, uh, the one piece of it this year was to come up with uh, this lightweight evaluation on architecture prototyping for big data, or LEAP for BD. All right. um, it's a relatively simple process, um, but because of the size of the solution space and the scale that I just mentioned, uh, it can be challenging to execute. So it begins with identifying requirements. And again, we're talking about very early in the development cycle, and so we've got some methods uh, to identify the key go-no-go no -go requirements, the must-have uh, capabilities 
that the database system has to have. From that, we move to evaluation criteria. And those evaluation criteria um, include things like how well does the data model fit and what are the query capabilities. Um, identify the candidates. Uh, this is a paper exercise that's supported by the knowledge base. I'll talk about the knowledge base in a minute. Um, and then getting down to prototyping of two or three candidates. So let's look at how does this play out in practice. Um, what are the problems people see? This was a survey of CIOs, um, so big data projects. Inaccurate scope, uh, ease of management and scalability. So these are issues that the leap for big data uh, uh, method addresses. Um, biggest problem that they see, though, is 80% uh, of them can't find the talent to work in big data. And this is a survey of uh, commercial organization CIOs. These are the people that can afford to pay for the talent. Um, unlike a lot of our government organizations that are much more resource constrained. Um, and if they can't find the talent at the price they're willing to pay, then we're certainly at a much less advantage situation here. So to address that, the second piece of research we did was to develop a knowledge base. Uh, this is uh, called K-Base, uh, Quality at Scale. Um, I envy the people that can find good acronyms for their projects, unfortunately. Uh, Ian and I are not one of them. But uh, K-Base is a knowledge base that we developed. Um, the innovation here is that um, it's not just abstract architecture principles, um, but we're taking uh, software engineering and computer science principles for distributed systems and then linking them down to concrete implementations in NoSQL technology. So you can start from principles if you're on the design side working down from selection. Um, identify your requirements, express them through scenarios, um, and then through this linkage of architecture tactics, get down to what are the particular technologies that are going to be viable candidates to realize that. Um, if you're on the acquisition side, you can work in the other direction. Given a particular database, what are the implications that's going to have on my architecture? Uh, and those are the two primary use cases we looked at. One was technology selection, the other was as an acquirer working back and understanding what they've got. Um, so compared to other knowledge bases, uh, this is very narrow scope but very deep. Okay? Um, and we're not looking to automate the design process, um, but we're looking to provide a, a trusted source of information. So for those of you that missed our demo last night, um, the, uh, some of the key things here um, are that this was built on the Semantic Media Wiki platform. Uh, so this is a scalable platform, uh, gives us some core capabilities in terms of content creation and curation, editing. Um, the underlying meta model is uh, semantic triples or RDF, uh, if you're familiar with that technology. Um, and uh, really the, the key thing here though is that most wikis, um, it's free text. You go and you open a page, start typing. Here we've got an actual knowledge model that is embodied in a set of forms and templates. Uh, so you can't just go and enter free text. Um, there's a, a taxonomy of features and values for those features. And so the content creation is highly constrained. Um, and then the templates dynamically generate pages based on the content that's being created. Um, so it's a, a scalable approach. Um, we've got some different kinds of search, faceted search to go through features, full text search um, with some tabular and graphical visualizations. So where are we? Um, the leap for DB, excuse me, leap for BD method uh, is complete. Um, we're looking for opportunities to uh, transition and pilot that um, out in real systems. Uh, the K-Base uh, prototype is complete. We're going to be going live with that by January 1st, uh, cleaning up some, some odds and ends. Um, uh, one of the things that came out of this research is a course um, that we've developed, uh, instructor-led and e-learning. Uh, we've got a couple of publications. There's an IEEE software paper that we've completed um, that's available at the desk, uh, and uh, a couple papers in review. Okay. Um, so where are we going? Um, two directions this year. Uh, one is machine learning, um, an approach to mine the uh, product documentation for these NoSQL databases and automatically extract and populate the feature model in the knowledge base. Um, doing this manually just isn't scalable, and we think that um, although we're going to start with this big data technology domain, 
this approach to mining documentation to produce technology knowledge may be generally applicable. Second is runtime observability. Um, from, the, uh, from the time that you start executing one of these big data systems, turn it on, deploy it, uh, your users are coming in with workloads you didn't expect, you're running on a cloud infrastructure that's providing quality of service that may be a little bit different from what you expected, and so you need to observe at runtime to determine the health of your system. Uh, just an example, Netflix, I mentioned their 2,000 node cluster. Recently, they lost 200 servers. Now, you might think 10% of the servers go down, red lights go off, people start running. Um, nobody batted an eyebrow there um, because they don't monitor, uh, they do monitor individual servers, but they also monitor end-to-end -end application health. And the application performance for their users wasn't degraded, uh, and so in spite of losing all these servers, not a big deal. So we're trying to figure out how, uh, do some research to identify how you can do that systematically, repeatedly, and efficiently in a, a constrained environment like we have. 